Hello, my name is Ben Peterson, and thank you for watching a very special episode of The Frame Show. In the fall of 2017, we met up with one of our favorite framed artists, Miss Aniela, in Somerton, Tennessee. We dive deep into some pretty personal aspects of her life and what's happened over the last several years and how that directly correlates to the most current project that she's working on, Birth Undisturbed. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of The Frame Show, and I hope you were deeply inspired by the passion that Miss Aniela shows. Huge shout out to Parachute. Thank you, Melissa, for putting together such a wonderful equipment kit, making the filming of this episode possible. That's it, Frame Show, right now. selfie before we begin. The last time we were together was 2013 in the Hamptons, New York. <laughs> whatever that you want, that Fashion shoot experience, think about how many we've done. We've been to New York again and LA and Iceland, France, Italy. We've been all over and it's just been really quite a dream come true to get into some of these places and spend time with a whole bunch of people that become your, your family for the week. And I've built out a whole collection since then of surreal fashion images. <laughs> happened in in those six years four years so I just you can cut that last bit out <laughs> Yeah, so back when I did my last framed interview in 2013, I was actually about six weeks pregnant with my first child. It was particularly poignant. I was doing the full framed interview whilst being this thrilled and hopeful new mother. Obviously, you know, every mother kind of keeps it hush hush at that stage. There's been certain key moments in my life where I feel like I've been really scared to do something, but I knew I had to do it. And then I've got through it. Everything was just falling down around me and I was like, well, just keep going. And we both think like that. And sometimes it, it's really helpful to go through difficult situations. Like they say, a, a smooth sea never made a skillful sailor. A little did I know that it wasn't quite going to go to plan. I mean, the pregnancy was all very lovely. Everything went well up to 32 weeks. And then I found out some devastating news. Our child had fatal condition, um, which just meant he wasn't going to survive beyond my body. He had a bilateral renal agenesis, which basically means he hasn't developed kidneys. There's, it's a very, very, very rich story. It's a story that I could say a lot about, and I've, I've put my whole story online for people to, to, to read about and to understand the journey that me and Matthew then went on, because from 32 weeks, we decided to carry Evan, our child, to term wherever he would come naturally and he came at the last hurdle 43 weeks three months after we had the initial diagnosis 
and we, we also decided that we were going to continue in our, our plan to give birth to him at home with the midwife. For us, it was like a victory. It was very beautiful, peaceful ending. For us, it gave us a lot of strength and empowerment to do it the way that we wanted to do it and to have our wishes and instincts respected. We then became grieving parents, you know. All our expectations had gone down a different route and we were having to say goodbye uh, to our baby who was stillborn. We loaded up the calendar for 2014, decided that we were gonna just go crazy and do as much stuff as we could just to kind of distract ourselves, to live the life we wanted to live and keep busy and make art. I did a Creative Live in Seattle. I did a big Nikon advertising campaign. I went to Iceland twice, actually. We Bulgaria. We did a fashion show experience in a French chateau for a week. I spoke at Photokina in Cologne. 2014 was jam-packed. Also, 2014 was when I got pregnant again with our healthy daughter, who is now with me here. To know that we could have healthy children, to become parents, and to continue living our life as photographers, this time with a, a child in tow, which is, you know, my dreams come true. I also feel very grateful and happy for the journey of our child, Evan, because I believe in a spiritual sense, he got everything he needed from this earthly experience. I was just happy and privileged to, to see him through in the most gentlest, motherly way I could. You can't go forward in fear. I found myself continuing to read birth books through pregnancy and after pregnancy. So this year I started to think about possibly doing something to do with birth. At first I thought that that meant having to try something that was a little bit more in the documentary genre. Or, and then I started to think about actually staging images that create an impression of a real birth. So that led on to the planning behind the series Birth Undisturbed, a series of 12 or so images that have a particular relevance to the idea of a woman giving birth in an undisturbed way. So it uses storytelling to really bring the viewer dramatically into a cinematic situation of birth, but with a particular spotlight on women giving birth in a way that honours the physiology of the birth process, most of them giving birth upright, giving birth in a way that I believe makes more sense. Most women these days do give birth in hospital, whether that's right or not, whether that should be the place for birth is, is something I definitely want to question with this series, but I also want to use relatable concepts and imagery to appeal to all women of all kinds of births that they've had. So starting off the series was a really big deal to me because I was very, very, very nervous, but also with a very strong sense of determination as well. It was to take place in a glass cube living room in the middle of a tropical looking garden. It's like a man-made room in the middle of nature. So you can see how this is very symbolic of home birth because obviously the whole idea of when a woman gives birth at home is that she's in this primal element where she can feel relaxed, that one with nature. What this location represented was the term cell sauvage, which means primitive room. The strange thing about this series is that right from the off I found myself having these visions for every one of them. And the first vision I had was a woman who's very, very animal-like, almost climbing the walls in her Amazonian energy of birth, like a savage kind of woman. And I just shot with a model called Gina Harrison on an avant-garde beauty shoot where she does these crazy facial expressions. And it's funny because while I was shooting her, I thought, oh, she could be the woman who gives birth. Let's ask her, do you want to give birth for me? <laughs> the night before the shoot, I was just thinking, what the hell am I doing? I've planned this shoot, I've arranged the BTS guys to come. I'm gonna be spending more money than I've ever spent on something that's high risk. And the next day was just absolutely awesome. From shooting fashion models for years and seeing pictures of women looking beautiful and sexy and young and feminine and all these things, but never really quite powerful. That is what this series is all about. People going, whoa, when they see these images because that's what I want to put out there, this new imagery showing just the whole wonder and the, the emotions and textures of, of childbirth. I think that we're starving for images like this. The inspiration for the next scene, it just clicked for me one day when I was looking through my books. I mean, it's calling to me to be made into a picture and as far as I could see, no one had done it before. 
The scene is set in about 1911 and a young Dr. Grantley Dick Reed is being called to a poor woman in a squalid bedroom in the East End of London who's in labour. And he offers chloroform to her but she refuses and carries on without it. And afterwards when he asks about it, she replies with a line that he'll never forget. She says, it didn't hurt, it wasn't supposed to, was it doctor? And he theorises what he calls the fear, tension, pain syndrome and publishes Childbirth Without Fear in 1942. Whatever kind of birth a woman wants today, the thing we can learn from Dick Reed is the importance of women being educated about birthing hormones and listening to their wishes at their bedside. And wanted to create a scene that really shows his fascination with this woman and a moment of power and tenderness holding her newborn baby. Another picture that's full of a lot of detail and texture. And then from there, I wanted to create an image that was inspired by an idea in my own mind. I wanted to portray the term fetal ejection reflex. And this sounds like a complex term, but it just basically means a spontaneous birth. But the fetal ejection reflex is basically what happens when a woman is undisturbed. Now, what's interesting is that in our culture, most of the time we only see this when a woman gives birth accidentally, maybe on the way to hospital or at home, unplanned. And so what I wanted to do is create a scene where she was still undisturbed, but she was, she'd just come out into an environment of the outdoors. And so I spent quite a few weeks looking around at all the houses in my area, trying to find a flowery porchway and a driveway that would suit the logistics of how I wanted this composition to be. This one in particular was very inspired by cinema. Edward Hopper and Gregory Crude's an inspiration in there. me straight away when I was designing this series of the obvious opportunity we have to portray most famous natural birth in the history of time, son of God himself, the most primal birth probably in culture. But it's funny how I started to look at images of the nativity and didn't really see anything that portrayed the actual birth of Jesus. Uh, people probably would say that was for good reason. We don't have an easy time looking at images of birth in our culture nor of religious icons naked. So I tasked myself with recreating the nativity, depicting Mary giving birth. Not just giving birth, but I wanted her to be portrayed in a moment of passion and ecstasy, something that didn't look entirely unpleasant. And I also wanted to shoot it in a way that was inspired by religious paintings themselves and kind of devotional tungsten tone to the image. So we actually shot this one in Tuscany in a stable. It's probably gonna polarize the audience. Some people will love it, some people will hate it, some people might be angry with it, but I don't see anything offensive with it myself. It's something that's so ordinary and, um, and something that I think we need to see more of. We need to normalize normal birth. So where I'm sitting at the moment, I'm sitting in the house of a lady called Judith in the middle of Tennessee. Judith is actually one of the original residents of a place we're in called The Farm. And The Farm, most people might not have heard of, but is actually very famous in the birth world. So here is some of the vehicles from the original caravan, convoy of camper vans and buses that came to this land in Tennessee in 1971. And this is literally what happened. They rolled up in the woods and started their own life here. 300 hippies basically arrived here and made it their home. And at the heart of this community is very much a fearless, 
respect for the physiological birth process. Most women give birth easily and healthily and don't need interventions. It's almost as close as you can get to birth utopia away from the mainstream. Um, I, I find it very inspiring because it's a dream for what I think a lot of people like myself would love to do, step away from culture and build your own community of like-minded people that want to do things their way in an instinctive, intuitive way. So the reason we're here is we're researching for another segment of Birth Undisturbed. I'm scared to get in. My urbexing days are behind me, <laughs> now that I'm a mother. Yeah, this is cool. I mean, it's a museum in nature, isn't it? Um, hopefully a safe museum. So this is like literally where these 300 hippies journeyed all the way from California to Tennessee in the 70s. And there was births that happened in these, in these vehicles. I don't know which ones. Maybe we could find some like telltale stains. <laughs> I'll just lay down. Yeah, just this is all research. I've got the image now in my mind. Yeah, got it. <laughs> the farm is spearheaded by a famous midwife, Ina Mae Gaskin, who's considered to be the most famous midwife in America, if not globally, and she has profoundly affected the lives of women and families worldwide, including myself. Her book, Ina Mae's Guide to Childbirth, was one of the books that I read. So it was one of the ones I took an instant shine to the most, because I love the way that Ina Mae writes. It's not just scientific, it's not just spiritual, it's not just feel good. It's this balance of everything, really, in a very level-headed, common sense kind of way. So it's a big deal for me to be sitting here today because the journey I've been through, uh, everything I've talked about um, back in 2013, four years ago, being pregnant with our first child and preparing to say both hello and goodbye to him. I, I needed empowerment to get me through that. And some of that empowerment came from the books that I read. It's better than being at, you know, you got your Disneyland and you got your, you know, pilgrimage to the Lords. This is, this is all that in one for me. All the midwives that have been part of the whole farm movement, many of which are still here. So we've been meeting with some of those midwives and talking to them about the history of the farm. Women still come here to give birth from all over the country, all over the world even. One of the biggest things that I love about the farm and the way birth is here, the birth culture here, is it respects there being a special energy around birth and for women to be treated in a, a loving and caring way, however they're giving birth. I want to tell the farm story in a picture. Everyone I talk to on the farm is giving me some little glimmer of inspiration for what's gonna go into this picture because I want to do the farm justice. You know, I have a passion for creating beautiful images but I'm still asking myself the question, why? Because beautiful images are beautiful images. What is the purpose of them? Where is it going? What is this passion door? Where is this passion door leading to? This birth series has been, I think, a long time coming. It's been kind of in me growing, so to speak. And there came a time where it was ready to be born. It's a perfect analogy. Sometimes as an artist, you've got to sit with something for a little bit and not push it because it's still developing. But then when it is ready to come, it's important to accommodate it and to be brave enough to say to yourself, yeah, I want to do this. One of the bigger reasons I'm making it is because no one's made it yet. If someone had made this before, I wouldn't be bothered making it because I wouldn't want to create something just for the sake of it. And I think we need it. Women need some thing empowering and informative to encourage them to tap into their own power. I find it unacceptable that women can enter into the whole birth process with fear or wanting to somehow make the experience disappear. We need to embrace it, we need to embrace our power. And I really hope my images can help contribute to a change in that. My name is Miss Aniela and I've been framed again. And I've been framed, full stop. My name is Miss Aniela and I've been framed. Do you want to look in the camera while I say that? All sweaty and disoriented. Do you want to film me with one breast out?